In many ways, sailing is a wonderful metaphor for life. It forces you to deal with unexpected challenges. It can be incredibly exhilarating. You end up in places you never dreamed of, and sometimes you even end up right back where you started. And right now, we are in one of those loops. Weeks ago, we sailed from the Abacos to Spanish Wales and Eleuthera. Then, we went down to Hatchet Bay where we took on new crew, and we have spent time together exploring this exotic island. And then we sailed right back to Spanish Wells where we enjoyed its beautiful beaches before eventually saying see you later to our good friend Emily. Then life threw us a curveball and some family matters took me back home to Missouri. But now I'm back in Spanish Wells with Kirsten, the dogs in the boat, and we have just a quick minute to enjoy this place for a little bit longer before we push forward and explore new islands further south. We are still in Spanish Wells. We dropped Emmy off pretty recently and I actually flew back home to Missouri and I'm back for some family things, but we are in the Yacht Haven Marina. We try to avoid marinas whenever we can, but one, when I went back home, I didn't want to leave Kirsten on anchor with the dogs alone. So we came in here and then two, a pretty big storm is supposed to be coming up to six inches of rain over the course of two days, 50 mile per hour winds from almost every direction. Um, and we just figured, hey, if they can keep us here in this slip where it's safe and very well protected, let's go with that. But in addition to having the slip, we also have a... What? I have no idea what you want me to say. Golf cart. Oh, a golf cart, yeah. Uh, some good friends of ours now, I mean, we only met them a couple days ago. They left the marina, but they had the golf cart for a couple extra days, so they just gave us the keys and let us borrow it. They were super sweet. When Andy was gone, they just kept asking if I needed anything. And that is like reason 1,538, like why I love the cruiser community, because they're just always helpful, always looking out for each other. And it was just, yeah, such a like peace of mind for me while Andy was gone. So we're gonna take advantage of this golf cart and we're gonna go to the nice store here in town, reprovision a little bit and then come back to the boat Just kidding. I don't remember what it's called. Spanish Wells Food Fair. We've been here before. It's actually a really nice grocery store. Um, it's got a lot of selection and apparently the produce truck came in yesterday. So it's supposed to be decently stocked. I'll be curious to see how quickly it got picked over in just one evening. Um, but it is good to reprovision. You finally remember to bring him this time. I did. So I don't have to use the plastic. No Mountain Dew though, last time we were here this was the only place that had, it's the first place I mean, in the Bahamas that had Mountain Dew. They have the little bottles, but not a 12 pack. I'm gonna guess $80 for what is in the cart. We'll find out what we'll say afterwards. We have hot dogs, eggs, a little bit of produce, paper stuff, a couple chips, little splurge items, um, and that is about it. I'm gonna guess 80. Earlier 
today came out here and finally decided, okay, we'll try to put this other spring line. So right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six lines to the dock. And while we're very, very thrilled to be in this marina and we're very thankful to Yacht Haven for sneaking us in and letting us stay a little longer, one of the things that I prefer in a marina is to have middle pilings between the two boats. So what that means is like where our boat is here and our neighbor, the beautiful mascot, um, there are like pilings, there's you know posts in between the two boats because then you can tie off to those posts and you can kind of trap your boat in the middle of the, um, the slip. But without those middle posts, we can't really do that. I understand why marinas you know, don't have the posts. It gives them more flip or flexibility in the slips for like what type of boats, how wide and how skinny, you know, how they can fill the slips, but um, it's, you know, it's obviously not quite as secure. So we put this spring line all the way over to, you know, across the dock this morning to help us try to stay off of the dock over there. I'm making English muffins. Basically the pioneer woman. <laughs> Don't send Paul Hollywood after me. <laughs> I think I let them rise a little too much. You know what I say about English muffins? They're just a vessel for butter and jam. <laughs> Flower from behind you. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Look, we gotta have cooking with Kirsten. No. Wait, oh! Ow. <laughs> Leave the door open. Okay, really. Interesting. Kirsten's just setting booby traps on the boat. His door's open, and I whacked him. I nailed my leg with it. English puffins. English. English muffins. Yeah. I wonder if I. <laughs> that's a good one. I wonder if I put them down like the other side first, if they would be flat on both sides. But once again, I don't really care what they look like. Barely care what they taste like, as long as they're cute. I think the first batch actually might have been better than the second batch. But we're gonna stop critiquing my baking because they taste good and it doesn't matter what they look like. With all the boat tours done, we went back to the ocean swing and we dabbled in a little bit of sunset photography. It's a skill that we definitely wanna get better at, but I think some turned out okay. And then back to the boat where we rode out the storm front overnight. It did get quite windy and it just poured buckets of rain. But as always, the storm will pass. And you know what? The sun does come out again. So it rained a lot, a lot the last couple days. And we just so happened to have had an empty bucket sitting out on deck before it started raining. Tape measure, water in the bucket. We're gonna measure, get a rough estimate on how many inches we've gotten in the last like 24-ish hours. About four and a half inches. It's pretty good. It's not a small amount of water over the course of like less than two days. The storm ended up being not so bad. We had one squall line come through that was pretty good. We also had about four and a half inches of water measured by our own bucket water collection system. But today is beautiful. Sun shining, it's not that windy. It's our last day here in the marina. They have a little yard over there to the side. We're gonna try to put the spinnaker into its sock. What you got there? Uh, the turtle bag, I was just about to ask you what that is. It's the bag that the sail actually go in. It doesn't go back into here. Uh, 
Oh, these go in here? Yeah, they're like battens. I mean, they're not like battens, they are battens. Do you have a knife or something? No, use your teeth. What, I'm not gonna use my teeth? Just kidding, you want me to go get, you want me to go get some scissors? Or do you think you got it? You can do it. It went about how we expected. I got this job because Andy is deathly afraid of tape. This is like overwhelming seeing how big this is. I'm like, I don't know, just overwhelmed and kind of like scared to sail this sail. <laughs> but I guess let's see if we can even get it attached first. Or... All right, so this, just like a bow in. Mm -hmm. This is one of those things that's gonna be like, oh, just like take that end through the sock and like attach it. And it's gonna be way more difficult than that. At least that's what I'm expecting. Well, I'm sure there was probably an easier and better way to do that, but I think it worked. It on. Yay! Just kidding, it's not very heavy. It's a big and awkwardly shaped though. Right. It'll be a little quiet because everyone else is basically still in bed. But we are about to pull up anchor here on Meek's Patch. We have to leave this early because we have to time the passage through current cut just right. And then we're gonna head off to the Exumas, so. 